Fruits Basket really is a special show. One of my all-time favorites, actually. I said this after Season 1 ended, but I feel even strongly about it now. Season 2 was better than Season 1. But for all the good I could say about it, all the praise I could give it, I think the thing that stands out the most is its message. It's not content to just be a show you watch for entertainment, but it's a show that challenges you to grow and be a better person. Despite appearing to be like a fantastical show about cute boys, there is so much here. It's so much deeper. It's about broken people burdened by their past, trying to fight against it, and sometimes failing. It's also a story about love in all of its forms. So today, I want to highlight some of the moments in Season 2 that really stood out as the message of what the Fruits Basket is trying to say. And yes, there will definitely be spoilers here for Season 2. Yeah. So one of the biggest things about the season is how it shows Yuki growing and the lessons he learns along the way. And his growth is so amazing. It's funny, a lot of his episodes I didn't care that much for. I found the student council annoying, and I wanted more of Toru and Kyo and Kisa and Momiji, and not Yuki. I especially wanted more of Momiji, and of Kisa, and of Toru, and of Kyo. Yeah, they're all great. But looking back, Yuki's episodes were really important. They showed the person he was, the person he was becoming. And he was able to grow so much, and not just grow as a person, but grow as his own person, not someone just defined by others. We learn a ton about Yuki this season. His mother sees him as a tool, as someone who will follow the predefined path to become the head of the Soma family. And he was Akito's growing up, in the dark room, filled with dark thoughts and darker despair. He had no hope. And this darkness twisted him. He envied Kyo, admired him. But that envy soon turned to hatred. And then there was that one moment where he broke out of it and just ran. And he did not know where he was going. He had no idea what he could find. But he knew he had to get out of there, go somewhere. And that moment is so key. Sometimes you'll get in a situation where all you can do is run, to fight violently against your fate. And sure, you may not know where you're going, but you just know that anywhere is better than where you are. So that's what you need to do. Run, get out of there. And this is where Yuki first met Toru. And this was so beautiful. Because it shows the person that Yuki was, it, that even when surrounded by the darkness within and around him, he was still the kind person that we know him as. And because of that, he noticed all those around him and was able to lead Toru back to her mother. In that moment, Yuki saved Toru. But Toru also saved Yuki. And one of the most important things for a person to have in their life is a purpose. And that's what Akito stole from Yuki. What he tries to steal from all of them by telling Yuki that he was useless. We'll talk more about Akito later, though. But for all the hope that Yuki had in that moment, he fell back into darkness. And this is so true of life. One moment of hope will not fully break despair's grip. And in fact, it may never fully break. This may seem sad. But honestly, I think it's more real than sad. If anything, it shows it's normal to have periods of hope and then periods of despair. As Yuki has learned, the world is not all black or white. There are times when the darkness may seem endless, but there's hope. And even in the moments where there is hope, where he is filled with the joy of life, there's also this nagging darkness, telling him that it won't last forever. Though that also fits Kyo's story, though a lot of these themes are intertwined. We'll get into that more later. But I think this shows a very important lesson for life, that it's normal to go through periods of darkness, depression, anxiety, whatever. But as insurmountable as these moments seem, they are temporary. And in the good times in life, it's important to recognize that that sense of euphoria and joy is not forever. So you need to cherish those moments because they are not infinite. A bit sad, but well, that's life. It is a bit sad. But it's also filled with joy as these characters encounter. Throughout the pain, they find some beautiful moments with each other. 
So yes, Yuki was brought out of darkness once more by Teru. And by finding Teru, Yuki found the love that he always needed. And this shows the power that one life can have on another. Teru is so filled with love and compassion in a way that not even she realizes. But it wasn't just Teru that saved Yuki. It was Haru getting Yuki away from Akito so maybe he could be saved. It was Shigure giving Yuki a place to live away from the estate. All these people together put Yuki in a place where he could be saved. And that's the beauty of it. All these characters doing this small thing that only they could ended up making all the difference. But Yuki's story is not over here. In fact, it's just beginning. His time with the student council is where he can fully spread his wings. Sure, it may be a bit awkward around them, but I love his relationship with Kakuru and just Kakuru in general. Kakuru is the type of character that really doesn't have limits with Yuki and just like pushes him out of his comfort zone. And that allows him to develop a great friendship. That's a lesson here, that sometimes you need these people who ignore common boundaries and just like crash through the walls you set up around your heart. That's how I've met some of my best friends. Or how they made themselves one of my best friends. Like I have these walls I keep up around most people. They just bust through and say, hey, I'm here. And then they're in my heart. And then they're friends. And that's kind of wonderful. And then we're able to see how Yuki is able to reach out to Machi. Just like Teru did for him. One of the great things about Yuki is just how observant he is of the needs of those around him. And how he remembers all the little small things. That's how he remembered about Toru when she got away from Kyoka when they were kids. And that's how he is able to reach out to Machi without ever meaning to. He sees those in the background that no one else will. And just like Toru made Yuki feel valued, Yuki made Machi feel valued. And there is so much that the two of them have in common. How they both felt nothing for those around him. How they were just going through the motions of life. But they recognized the pain the other had because they had both felt it. Like when Yuki was locked in the closet. Machi literally broke down the door with a chair. And that's the type of person you sometimes need in your life. So the lesson here is simple. Bust down doors from time to time. Figurative doors. Though who knows? Sometimes you just have to bust down a literal door as well. But there's another lesson with Yuki and Machi. And that's the importance of small actions. Yuki asks Machi what color she wants to be for the school defense force. This was a very stupid scene and just like a dumb event in both their lives that should not have any meaning. But it mattered to both of them. Words have power. More than you think when you say them. They can harm or build up in ways that you can imagine. There's more I could say about Machi too, but we'll get into that more in season three, I think. So I'll save that for later. And I'm also like two pages into this, so yeah, this is going to be a long video. <laughs> but there is more to Yuki too, and that's just how his relationship with his mother, how jaded that left him, and how he's able to find the love he wanted from Toru. The thing about Toru is that she and Yuki are the same age, but Toru has this motherly feeling about her. She takes care of those around her. And that's the type of person that Yuki needed. What I think is so cool here is how it shows that the family relationship you need, the mother you need for the comfort to lift you up, might not come from your biological mother. And it shows how relationships can be like so multifaceted. Like you have the romance, you have the family, but you also have these things where one person will care for the other, lift them up. You have some where they're more peers, like Kakuru and Yuki, or Yuki and Machi. And then you just have others where like Yuki can be the one to lift the other person up. Kind of like his relationship with Kisa. And all these relationships have so much power. And of course, when talking about Yuki's relationships, we cannot forget about Ayumi. Oh boy. Ayumi is a lot. He is also the best, though. See, you can quote me on saying that. Ayumi has very extreme personality, which is a result of how he rebelled against his mother. What I love about him is how self-assured he is, and is able to use that to be there for Yuki when he really needed it. The whole parent-teacher conference thing was amazing. And what I love about Ayumi here is that he doesn't really know how to handle Yuki. 
He never has. But he is still trying to make the effort and finding a way to help in a way that only he can. What this shows is sometimes you just have to go all out with who you are and that it doesn't take a perfect person to take care of the one that you love. And so, yes, Ayumi was there for Yuki. <laughs> as much as Yuki might not want it, that was actually everything that he needed. But as interesting as all the things are about Yuki this season, Kyo also had some great moments. Kyo is a type of character that's very easy to anger and just doesn't care about much in life, not even himself. But he does love Toru. And this love for Toru is so precious. He wants the best for her and will do whatever it takes to make her happy. In many ways, Kyo demonstrates the greatest example of love we see in the anime. It is purely selfless, not thinking of himself. And one of the beauties of Kyo's love is how it pushes him to do stuff for Toru he wanted otherwise, like the school play. Which, we'll definitely talk about that more later. Though the thing about Kyo and his story is that there's a lot of caution here. Talk about the danger of going through life not thinking of yourself. Kyo's love for Toru is wonderful. But Kyo sees himself only as a monster, as someone not deserving to be loved in return. He doesn't know what he wants in life. He thinks he'll be locked up, so why bother? For him, life is meaningless. What meaning he has in it is just to make Toru happy. But that love can only do so much when he sees no future for himself. And that really is a tragedy of the beach arc and so much of Kyo in season two. The lesson here is that love for someone else is wonderful, but you need to love yourself as well and allow yourself to be loved as well. And I ended up taking a long break when grinding the script, so I'm not entirely sure how I meant for this to come together. But whatever, I'm just going to keep going with the script that I imagine might have existed in my mind at the time. And that script then brings us to Rin. Out of all the characters, she probably has the most brutal past, filled with abuse. In a way, it felt like her part came across a bit too strong. But as tragic and over-the-top as it might seem, it's real. These things do happen to people, and people will connect to it. I have friends who they relate to Rin way more than I have, and the lesson here is so important. Rin has sealed herself off from others, being so scarred from her past. She longs for the kindness of others, like Rin and Toru, not Rin, Haru and Toru. But she doesn't want them to be hurt, so she push, pushes them away. It's so twisted. But it makes sense. She, Though eventually she got to the point where she just gave up. She let herself be held by Toru. And what I love about this is how, yes, it shows how important it is to let yourself be loved by those around you. But also shows the value in a relentless kindness that won't give up. Toru was rejected by Rin multiple times. But she finally got through. And this just shows how important kindness is, that even when you can't see the impact it has on others, it still might. And this kindness can make all the difference. So now let us move on to what was a highlight of the season for me, and that is the school play. And I love how they did this. Like, they started with Cinderella, but it became Cinderella sort of, or Cinderella kind of. I actually forget what they actually called it. But they basically threw the script of Cinderella away and just made their own story based off the roles that they were given. Now, in a way, this doesn't make sense. Like, why not recast it? But there's a lesson here with life. You might find yourself in a role that doesn't fit you, but you just have to deal with it. So when that happens, throw away the script. Write your own. Don't be limited to just acting the words that someone else has written for you. And you know what? The fact that they didn't just switch the cast made the show a lot better. Because who would care about the Fruits Basket characters just doing Cinderella? Yeah, it might be fun because the characters are cool, but this allowed them to do something we have never seen before. So when you have a script that seems written out, throw it away. Do something no one has seen before. That's how you have a special life. And this, that even more emphasizes the importance of what they're doing. They're able to rewrite the script to play the strengths, play to the people that they are. In your life, family, or society, or whatever, 
will tell you that you have a certain way you should live your life. A script to follow. But you might not be the right person for the role they have set out for you. So again, make the script your own. But one person rewriting the script would not work. That's why you need to work with all those around you. Find their strengths, their weaknesses, their hopes, their dreams. And shape the story to bring you all the happiness that you desire. And that's the deeper lesson here. Don't just write the script for your own life, but work with others. Write a script for your community, those you love, your family, not your biological one, but those you truly care about, and create a wonderful life together. But there's another lesson here, and that's how the love story was twisted to not be about love, which is really amazing if you think about it. Fruits Basket is known from outsiders to be a romance. It is actually a reverse harem. But while it does have romance, it's actually a pretty minor plot of the overall story. Instead, it's a story about life and trauma and love in all of its forms, not just romantic. It's not about like how Toru falls in love with Kyo or whoever. And we saw that with the play, how Cinderella found a perfectly happy ending, not falling in love with the prince. And that lesson is so important to us. We don't need to find love to be happy in life. This is a message I found to be true. Like, I am single, and I am happy living a life being single. Maybe I will find love one day. That would be great, don't get me wrong. But maybe I won't. And that could also be great. And this goes back to the overall message of the play. How we should not write the script of our lives just because that's how society says it should be. We should make it our own. And that applies to romance as well. And while there is something from society, something to be said for the greatness of love, you're not a failure if you have not found love yet, or maybe you never will find this romantic love. But you can still find a wonderful life with others. And you can still enjoy the simple things in life. And that's one of the other things I love about Fruits Basket, is how it shows so many simple moments. And you know, life has been crazy. Like this year, I'm sure everyone has had a crazy year in one way or another. But you know what have been my favorite parts of it? The simple moments. The times with friends. Even if we're separated by the internet, we're still together. And that's great. And back early this season, there is an episode with the line, Sometimes all you can do is have someone with your friends. And that is so true. In the craziness of life, you just have to enjoy being with those you love. Not romantic love, necessarily, but enjoy the simple things, the simple food with friends. So that is what I think the message of the show is, or at least the many messages of the show. Let me know what you thought about that, or what messages you think I missed, because I know there are things I definitely missed. And I'll be back later to talk more about Fruits Basket, because there's so much to say. This is going to be a painful wait until season three. But regardless, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.